What's up, guys, and welcome, wow, to part 31 of my no mod shop class here on the School Zone. This has definitely been a popular series on the channel, and I'm just humbled by how well it's been received. Thank you guys for all your encouragement and wonderful comments. Keep it up, love it, sharing the information, all that. So today's lesson is going to be a sort of sequel video to a previous video I did, but it's actually going to be a double feature. First, I'm going to show you how to turn those ballistic gun towers from part 7 of the series into wireless laser towers. Then for the second part of the lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a very creative but more traditional Raider style gun tower. A lot of viewers have been requesting that over the course of the series, and whenever it can fit into the syllabus, so to speak, I definitely aim to please. I'm actually working on an entire Raider style settlement, which is a departure from my typical cleaner looking builds. So I'll show that to you guys when I'm finished with it. But before we get to all that, it's time for another peek at this month's Wall of Fame. As you guys may have seen in some of my past videos, I featured the names of my supporters on Patreon once a month on this here Wall of Fame. And here are my fantastic Patreons this month. Thanks so much to all of you for helping me get a little closer to doing YouTube full time. And by the way, for those of you wondering why I don't put out daily videos or even like four or five videos a week, it's because I have a day job that pays the bills. For a channel of my size, YouTube pays less than a minimum wage for the amount of work I put into it. So I have to do these videos, which is what I really enjoy as my side gig. I want to make it my full time gig. So think about jumping over to my Patreon page and helping to support the channel. Every time I reach a Patreon goal, that money will be reinvested into the channel to improve things like music or equipment, that sort of thing. And there are many cool perks you get as well. Okay, so let's head over first to my Vault 42 build and re-engineer those wicked gun towers. Then for the second part of the video, we'll head over to Oberland Station and I'll build the Raider gun towers over there. And in case you want to skip ahead to the Raider gun towers, I'll leave time codes in the description below. Hopefully you'll check out the whole video because, you know, some of the techniques in the first half could be useful for other things. But I want to be respectful to the people who clicked on the video only wanted to see the gun towers in the thumbnail. So hop on the school bus and I'll meet you over there. Okay guys, we are here at my Vault 42 build. Hopefully the game has a stable frame rate doesn't crash since I went way beyond the settlement size limit at Grey Garden here. But anyway, here's a quick clip from my prequel video explaining what we're about to do. Now once I post my upcoming wiring through the walls video, I'm going to come back and show you guys how to turn these gun turrets into laser turrets or even missile turrets completely seamlessly with no wires showing. So that's another option that you can do. All right then, let's get started. So over here we have the uh, killer future tech ballistic towers and we're going to turn them into wireless laser towers. All right. So if you have this built on a stable section of earth, then you should be able to uh, grab the supports and just pull them out. And then later on, we can snap them right back into place. OK, so I'm going to set them down just like over here or something. Come on now. There we go. Just out of the way. So the first thing we're going to do is run some power like we did in my invisible wiring video. And we're going to sink it into the ground. So what I'm going to do is actually go to connectors and switches and grab one of these power pylons. All right. They're just a little easier to sink into the ground than these connectors. You know, you could use these if you want to fiddle with it, but I'm going to try to make this sort of a speedy video because it's going to be long as it is. Okay, so I'm going to set this down right. Okay, I look centered from that side. Wow, I look centered from that side too. Cool. Got it on the first try. <laughs> okay, now before you connect it, you're going to want to sync it because sometimes when you sync these kind of things, uh, the power disconnects. So I usually sink it first and I'm going to leave a little tip up there sticking out uh, so we can reach it. All right. So let's go into structures and go to warehouse. All right. I'm just going to use one of these taller posts. That should be good. OK, then I'm going to hold down the A group select and then just sink it down into the ground. Okay, so I put the post a little too far down. Yeah, 
Okay, I want to explain real quick why this is not group selecting the whole thing. And that is because uniquely in the building system, anything that's above something that you want to group select doesn't get group selected, okay? So that's how come I can group select this post and not group select the whole tower. All right, kind of interesting tidbit. Thought you guys might be interested in knowing. Okay, so let's try this again. Group select, sync. There we go. All right, I probably can go down a little bit more. Try it again. There we go. So just the, just the tip. Okay. So I'm gonna pull away the post. Now we can connect it to a power source, okay? And you want something that's a little far away so you don't see the wires. So I have this little connector down here I can use. So we're gonna wire glitch. I'll put a link to uh, my wire glitch video if you don't wanna do that. All right, so I'm gonna click and drag this invisible wire over to this power pylon. Okay. Now we have a little bit of a wire sticking through. When we put the supports back, you probably won't see it, but if it's still bothering your sensibilities a little bit, here's a little trick that you can do to kind of cover it up. Now, if I had a power pylon that was a little farther away, like maybe across my settlement over there, and this wasn't a downward slope, you wouldn't see that wire because it's a little closer and we're on an angle here. That's why you see it, all right? So I'm gonna go into decorations. I'm gonna go to miscellaneous and I'm going to grab a potted plant, all right? So I'm gonna set the potted plant down right there. Go back into structures, just grab any old post or pillar. This one's probably good enough for this purpose. Okay, then I'm going to group select and see now we can sync the plant down. Now for this, you the plant's selecting bounding box is actually the, the pot of the plant, not the leaves. So you want to get this right the first time, otherwise you're going to have to group select everything and pull it back out again, which would pull the pylon back out again, okay? So just keep that in mind if you want to make adjustments later, you know? So let me try to get this right the first time here. That looks good to me. Okay, so I'm going to grab the post. And let's make sure we can put the supports back into place. Should work. Pop. Bingo. Look at that. All right. Now, once I exit out of here, you know, it just looks like a, one of the more greener bushes. You know, we got a bunch of scree over here and stuff. But, uh, you know, anyway, that's an idea to cover it up. You could cover it up with... Uh, storage boxes or whatever you want or just leave it it's not going to be too noticeable okay next step is i'm going to pull this back out again i just wanted to show you that it's going to be able to pop back in place stick this back over here okay now we're going to go and replace oh look at this it's got all foggy on us all right i got a solution for that wow <laughs> next thing you know and it's like pea soup all right, so my little firework mortar. Okay, by the way, here's another little tip for you. Uh, if you've made some fireworks and you don't feel like scrolling all the way through your miscellaneous menu, you can click the left thumbstick and set it to weight. And for some reason, even though it's weight zero, it, it kind of pops up near the top. All right, so we'll just let that shoot off there. Bingo. Okay, I'm gonna quick save here so <laughs> I don't lose everything we've done so far. Okay, let's, what's up buddy? Okay, let's head back over here and we're going to grab the scaffolding. Should have one of these already made. Yep, here we go. From when I did the last video. 
Got robots in the way. <laughs> Come on, move, man. Gotta get, it, gotta get up there. Gotta get up there. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, got it. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> Okay, and then I have one of these ramps I can use to just climb on over there. Oh, left workshop mode. Okay, just so I don't fall off and all that. Okay, so I'm going to hop over here and I'm going to store all these heavy machine gun turrets. And let's add in our laser turrets. Our heavy laser turrets. Could do missile turrets too, actually. That'd be a little overkill though. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm missing fiber optics. Look at that. <laughs> All right, guys. Got to make a run to the uh, post-apocalyptic radio shack. <laughs> I'll be back in just a second. 20 minutes later. All right, guys. We are back. <laughs> So, if you finished Automatron, uh, Isabel, the former mechanist, she sells fiber optics. So, that's where I went and just bought a little shipment. And let's go ahead and start putting these turrets down. The heavy laser turrets. Perfect. Okay, great. Then, once you got all the turrets down, then you can set a... Set a conduit up right in the middle. Okay, then we can just hook up each of the laser turrets. To that center conduit. Now, if you're worried about seeing these wires from ground level, then if you wanted to, you could add an extra conduit right to the base of it and then run that wire to the center of each of these, okay? But, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm perfectionist, but I'm not that much of a perfectionist. So <laughs> that is good enough, okay? Oh, and then before we leave, what I'm going to do now is wire glitch that conduit. Can I squeeze down there? So close. I did it. <laughs> okay, so let me uh, get out of here. And let's see if those things are running. They're running. <laughs> That's awesome. So I got to run up and uh, grab that little piece. Then let's put this back in place. Oh, you know what? I was supposed to put that back in place before we hooked it up. Darn. <laughs> okay, let me do that over. I'll fast forward through all this. Boom. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so now we have that killer Future Tech gun tower re-engineered with heavy laser turrets with barely any wires visible. In fact, the only wire that's visible is that wire right there. All right. And if you really wanted to, you could even glitch in a post or a column to cover that, you know? That's going to the extreme. But the point is, is that, uh, yeah, you can barely even tell if there's any power hooked up to it. It just looks like a freestanding defense tower. And that thing is going to devastate enemies, all right? Off camera, I'll go ahead and uh, fix that one up too. But anyway, I wanted to show you that for the first part of this video. And as you can see, it also boosted the defense by an extra four times four is 16, all right? Because the, uh, the heavy machine gun turrets only give a defense of eight, 
and the heavy laser turrets give a defense of 12. They take a little more power, but it's worth it. Now, before we get to the more elaborate Raider-style gun tower, I thought I'd show you a simpler build that I have over at the Taffington Boathouse. So let's head over there and I'll show you what I mean. Hop on the school bus and I'll meet you over there. All right, my builders, we are here at Taffington. I haven't built anything here yet. I'm saving it up to show you guys how to expertly repair that house in an upcoming double black diamond lesson. But I did want to put up some defenses here to take care of all those nasty blood bugs that are always swarming about nearby. As you can see, it tore up some ghouls as well. But anyway, yeah, it's a pretty simple configuration. I just put four quarter circles from the concrete floor section and four heavy turrets, and then I just pillar lifted them up onto that pole for support. That pole, of course, comes with the settlement. It's kind of ugly, so I figured I could at least make good use of it. But yeah, I haven't had to come back and defend this settlement one time since I put that up. And since you can see, uh, you know, power lines are running to it, we could integrate that trick I just showed you over at Vault 42 into this, you know? I won't do that now, but you guys get the idea. Anyway, I just wanted to show you an alternative if you wanted something a little simpler. Okay, now on to Oberlin Station for that wild-looking Raider-style gun tower. Off on another field trip, up on the bus, and I'll see you over there. <laughs> I think you guys can tell I have too much fun making these videos. Anyway, once again, haven't really built anything over here yet. In the case of Oberlin Station, I don't know what I want to build here yet, actually. I might do something with some of the buses to try to create like a, you know, maybe like a Raider-style train encampment or something like that. I don't know. I got so many other builds going on, you know, that I want to make sure I finish those first. I got this weird water pump that seems to have a ghost that I'm in the water. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have run into this wild glitch. I haven't had the heart to, you know, get rid of it because it's just so funny looking, but it keeps doing it every time I show up. Okay, so let's get on to the build. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, find kind of a flat place. I don't want to pull up all these uh, plants. Although this area would be the flattest to use, but we'll just use this area over here. So this one is going to be a fun one. We'll probably put it up over there or something like that. I hope it doesn't start raining. I don't have a uh, <laughs> firework mortar set up at, at this place, but we'll go until it gets too dark or it starts raining. And I'll just hop on a sleeping bag or something. Okay, so we're gonna start off in structures and we're gonna go to the wood section and we're just gonna use a regular old shack floor. So I'm gonna set that down right there and then go to the end, miscellaneous. And I'm gonna throw on some of these uh, fences, balcony railings. Okay, so far so good. Then uh, actually still in the wood section, we're gonna go to walls and I'm going to grab these shack, wall, and roof sections, okay? And if you're a little patient with this, you actually don't have to glitch anything. They will fit in there if you just kind of uh, work with them. And let's see if we got it even kind of on both sides. Yeah, looks, looks even to me. Okay. Then you can grab another one and it should snap. Uh, you saw it. You saw it. It did it. It wanted to do it. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> okay, so if it doesn't snap right away, it's because you either have it too far forward or it's not even. I think it's because I, I don't have it even. Let's just try to work with it a little bit. All right, let's try it again. This is the only part that'll give you a little trouble, but it will work. All right, so you just gotta be patient with it. Let me pull this out and try the other side first. All right, you provisioner. Go on, go on. All right, so let's, uh... let's work on this side for a second here. Uh, 
Okay, see how it's not quite even there? Oh, that looks good. Now with this, you do have to be very precise if you want it to snap. Now we could use, you know, the pillar glitch and glitch that in there, but whenever I can uh, avoid using that and get things to snap on their own, it's always better. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Boom. You gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing with settlement building, you know, it takes a little patience. If you have a, a personality that's very easily frustrated, settlement building can be a little frustrating for you. But the rewards are so great, you know, when you finally get it to work like that. See, and I uh, didn't have to do any tricks. In fact, so far, everything has been something that you can build with the base assets, including the turrets. So let's get those out. And we'll ju we're just going to use the uh, the heavy machine gun turrets, okay? Now, here's what we want to do. I can set these in here, but do you see how the wood is covering up where the barrel is? Not so much on this side, all right? But you have a little more trouble working them into this side. And uh, they can turn and face this side and shoot through the wood, but um, it doesn't look very realistic. So what we want now is a way to prop these machine guns up onto something so that they are firing over the railings of this little uh, shack platform, okay? And there is not a whole lot of things that these turrets can sit on. In fact, nothing that we can even really put in here as far as structures go, you know? Like if I try to grab some other small piece of wood like one of these small shack floors um it's just not gonna not gonna work i mean i could place it in the center but that's not gonna help our cause here all right and i tested out a lot of items from the furniture section they don't fit on any of the beds they don't fit on any of the chairs it would make total sense that they would you know be able to sit on top of a coffee table for example but they don't they just clip right through it Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, so far, like I said, we've been able to build everything with the base assets. But here's where you will need one of the DLC, and that's Nuka World. Because I found that in decorations, under Nuka World, in the section for Dry Rod Gulch, these hay bales, of all things, can provide that uh, boost for the machine gun to sit on. All right, isn't that kind of amazing? <laughs> And it fits right in with our Raider style here, junk like that, you know? So for my sensibilities, it worked perfectly, all right? So what we're gonna do is uh, set this machine gun turret right on top of there. Make sure it's uh, lined up, looks good to me. And then you can just group select the hay bale. Grab that hay bale, come on, man. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, group select and then watch this. It just pops right into place. So I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the edge. Where it's going to turn blue. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to do that for the other four. So I'll speed up the footage. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna quick save here. Okay, so we have a cool little <laughs> gun shack here with these turrets sitting on the hay bales, which is just classic. But now we need to create the elevation. Let's do this. I'm gonna group select this whole entire thing and see so we can move it around, which is just awesome. I'm gonna push it away a little bit and I'm just gonna set it over here I'm going to set, actually, I'm going to set it down here for the time being. All right, just kind of out of the way. And I'm going to go back to this little flat section here. And then we're going to go back over to structures and then over to 
the miscellaneous section, and we got these weird totems. Now this part of the build, of course, is going to be completely up to your style, all right? If you wanted to, you could just use straight ones like this, or you could just opt for the completely straight posts at the end of the barn section. Those might look kind of good too. You know, or if you don't have contraptions or whichever one the barn came from, Far Harbor, then you could go to wood and maybe use these, uh, you know, like these shack foundations or something like that, you know. But uh, we're going to get a little different, all right? So it's always good to be a little different. And we're going to use these angled totems, all right? Because it's going to, you know, make it look just a little bit different, a little bit weird, very raider-like. Okay, so I'm going to set down the first one there. And what you want to do is, this part's going to be a little tricky, actually. And it really just has to do with the way that Fallout handles uh, viewing angles and your depth perception. Okay, so I'm going to set one there. And I'm going to set another one right there. And that's just so I can set it down and move it. You want to make sure these are all lifted to their full height. See, that wasn't even lifted to its full height. And I'm going to move it until it's right next to it. Cool. Look at that provisioner. Back already. <laughs> that was a quick run. Okay, this one I think I can move a little closer. And let's make sure it's was raised to its full height. And then the last one. Just gonna set one down. Now I can move it into place. Doesn't look like it's in the ground from here, but it is. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Okay, so from here you can make some fine-tuned adjustments. Make sure they're all raised to their full height. I don't know why this one wouldn't... Yeah, that's weird. These totems sink very easily, so... Pull them all the way up, and the reason for that is obvious. You know, you want them to all be touching the bottom of the platform. Okay, that kind of looks good to me. What I usually do at this point is just go back into the wood section and just grab a, a regular floor and just see if they're all kind of touching there at even heights. Could probably raise that one on the right a little more. Yeah, this one needs to be raised up a little bit. Just going to check and make sure that one's at its full height. Okay, looks good, looks good. And the reason I wanted to be particular about this is because once you put the shack on top of that, you won't be able to make as many adjustments because we're into group selection territory. So at this point, I'm going to do another quick save. Okay, so far so good. So now we can group select this little group of totem poles. It's up to you where you want to put it. I think I'm going to put mine like right on the edge of the settlement over here. Maybe like that. Let's go up a little higher. Nice. So far so good. I hope you guys aren't minding if it's getting kind of dark out. Maybe I should... Nah, you know what? Kind of fits with the mood. <laughs> the raider mood. Okay, so now what we're going to do is elevate this whole gun shack. So let's, uh, let's go grab... We'll start off by using something from the scaffolding. I, I always find the scaffolding to be a little simpler. And there's this really tall one here. So I'm going to sink that down. Right there. Okay, then I'm going to group select. I'm going to bring this over to right here. And I'm going to raise it up as high as it can go. Okay, 
Okay. So I need to make sure it's not within the area of these poles. Okay. So let me just double check that I didn't get it. To okay, good, good, good. Because if I group select and grab these poles, then that's not what we want. All right. Then from here, let's just grab a regular post, you know, like from uh, the warehouse section. One of these. I'm going to set it down right there. Perfect. Now we can keep raising it up. All right. So here's the part that will get a little tricky. And this has nothing to do with... Uh, with the build so far, it has to do with the terrain we're on. You know, we're running into uh, problems with the tracks. And, you know, see, I'm not having any problems over here. But, oh, I ran into the tree over there. But anyway, let's see if we can get this, because it worked in my test. Maybe in another settlement where you don't have as many uh, terrain issues, this will probably be a little easier to do. All right, let me, uh... So close. There we go. Sometimes you just have to rework some of the engineering there. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get these so that they are touching the four corners. Actually, here's another place where you'd probably want a quick save. And that mainly has to do with the depth perception problems again. Because sometimes something that looks like it's uh, close enough in Fallout 4 isn't quite close enough where it's too far, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm going to cross my fingers that that is right where we want it. <laughs> and if it's not, I can always reload the quick save. Let me get it right to the blue. You know, just so they look like they're touching and everything like that. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Not bad. It's a little too far forward, but you guys get the idea. Had to cut this back in here real quick. You know what I just realized is that you can actually move these a little bit uh, once they're in place. It's tricky, but they can be moved, adjusted slightly, you know? So you can get them like perfectly to the edge there. But that is really cool looking to me. I mean, it's just unique looking, you know? The guns are perfectly aligned so they can shoot over the railings. And we're right at the edge of the settlement. Any raiders that are gonna be coming from this direction. And this place mostly gets hit by raiders and gunners. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, they're gonna have a bad day. And uh, once the rest of the settlement starts looking like a raider outpost, then those totems will fit right in. And like I said, if you don't like the look of those totems, then you can put more traditional straight columns down there. But yeah, that is uh, that is my version of the Raider Gun Tower. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you guys found this video useful. I know it was a longer video, but that's because I tried to combine several build styles into one lesson. You guys will have to let me know if you like the longer videos or if you like the shorter lessons better. You know, still trying to get a feel for that. So if you guys want shorter videos, that's actually easier for me. But I'd be happy to do longer videos too, you know? Squeezing a few extra little tips and tricks in each of the videos. I aim to please. Anyway, don't forget to turn on that notification bell to be alerted when these videos drop. And in my current output, I definitely won't be spamming you, you know what I mean? But if you want to get on that wall of fame for the December video, then don't forget to drop by my Patreon page. Any level of support is always appreciated. Anyway, be sure to throw a like on the video and share this around. See you guys in the next lesson. In the meantime, happy Thanksgiving and class dismissed.